Today we're looking at uh, different situations that can be modeled using quadratic uh, functions. So the first example that we're looking at is this problem here where we're examining uh, the price P in dollars and the quantity X sold of a certain type of product uh, and they obey this demand function where the price is equal to negative one fourth times the number of quantity uh, sold plus 80 and this is in dollars. So part A says find a model that expresses the revenue, the amount of money that we make, as a function of x, which is the number of items sold. So we can see here that this is telling us that the revenue is equal to the number of items sold times the price that we sell the items for. So if this is the price that we sell our items for, we just have to take this value and multiply by x, and that will give us our revenue function. So we have A here, part A. So if I take this X and distribute it through, that will give me my revenue function. So R of X equals negative, uh, equals negative one over four X squared plus 80 X. So if we're looking at this function, we see that it's a quadratic and that its leading coefficient is negative. Uh, so that means that it's going to be a quadratic that opens down like this. Um, so that's actually quite important when we're talking about the domain because when we're trying to find the domain, we want to know uh, what x values will give us some positive revenue. We don't want negative revenue. Uh, also, we have to consider that we can't sell a negative value of x. We can't sell a negative number of products. So we want to know what x values give us uh, values that are above the x-axis, and then obviously they can't be less than zero. We could sell zero, so that's going to be the first place that this starts. So to figure out what's going to make this above the x-axis, having a positive revenue, we want to look for x-intercepts. So if you look, you can see our graph is going to look something like this, right? It's going to look something like this. So we want to know where are these x-intercepts. So we had the function r of x equals negative one over four x squared plus 80 x. So for the domain, again, we need to find uh, the x-intercepts here. So this is part b, the domain. So finding x-intercepts, that's going to be when our revenue is equal to zero. So we have zero equals negative one over four x squared plus 80x. Now this problem is probably easier to deal with without fractions. So we can multiply both sides by the denominator of our fraction, which is four, and that will get rid of the fractions. So four times zero is zero, so we have zero equals. Uh, that's gonna give us a negative x squared plus 80 times four, that's a 320x. Now this is factorable, so factor it. Zero equals, so we factor out an x, and then we have negative x plus 320. And using the zero product property that tells us that if one or both are zero, then this whole thing is zero, so that gives us our x-intercepts. So just set each piece equal to zero, x equals zero, and negative x plus 320 equals zero, and then solve. So the first one's already solved. Here we can add x to the other side and get that 320 is equal to x. So our x-intercepts happen at zero, so here, and then when the value of x is 320. So our domain is the set of all x such that x is in between selling zero items or 320 items. So zero less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 320. Now it's less than or equal to because we are allowed to sell zero and we could sell 320, um, but at these points we wouldn't be making any revenue. So it can be equal to, but we would prefer it not be in terms of actually if we were running a business, right? And so this can also be written in interval notation. It's gonna be brackets again because it's equal to it goes from 0 to 320. So that would be our interval notation.